All right, guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about anchor bolts and leveling plates. We did a, a short introduction video. We try and keep them short uh, when we're doing just a simple tutorial to get everybody the idea, but we wanted to go a little bit more in depth. Uh, we had that question asked specifically, and it was something we planned to do anyways. So here's a little bit more information on that. I'll kind of be uh, your moderator here. I'll pepper Matt with questions so that he doesn't just fly right by something. I will pretend very diligently to not know anything about SDS2 and uh, make sure to ask the, the questions that we need to. So, All right, Matt, why don't you get started? Introduce yourself, obviously, and uh, let's get going. All right, well, uh, so obviously Matt with uh, United Structural on the Steel Forum, and uh, today we're gonna be looking at how to set up the leveling plate and anchor bolts a little bit more in detail. So one of the things that we noticed is uh, that the leveling plate parametric that I was running, I've got that set up as a launcher so that it's easy for me to just run right off my toolbar, but not everybody's gonna have that set up. So if you don't already have it set up, I'll show you where the location is. And what a launcher basically is, is it gives you direct access with a button to launch a parametric, right? That's that's pretty much the whole. Yes, it's it's a parametric that's copied into the system itself, and it attaches it to a button. You can give it a graphic icon if you want. You can just make it text, and it allows you to locate it anywhere on your toolbar and just have it for ready access. So I like to use it for any parametric that I'm going to run more than once a week, basically. Now, where did you get the parametric? Is this just a built-in one it's, or? It's included. So if you go into the macro examples distributed BV folder, scroll down, it is leveling plate. BV being the illustrious Bruce Vaughn, of course. Absolutely. And it runs the exact same way as the one I demonstrated before, where I'll select a column and then go ahead and launch it. So I'll go ahead and put a column in somewhere off in space so we can have one. And we'll plug this in at what, 10 feet, zero. And let's get that base plate in. Okay, so now I have a column, no leveling this plate. This is a column. This is a column. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run that same parametric leveling plate, click the column. Of course, now I'm set for 1080p, so everything's kind of off my screen. Okay, so I don't want a particular shelf dimension. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the Hold up, what's yeah. a shelf dimension? So a shelf dimension is an amount of overrun beyond the base plate itself. So if you want it to exactly match the footprint of the base plate, you set a shelf dimension of zero. If you want it to go an inch beyond on all sides, give it a one inch shelf dimension. Okay, got it. Okay, you set your grade, set your sequence, click okay. Now, I have a leveling plate. There's my leveling plate detail. Awesome. It picked up those whole dimensions directly from the base plate, right? Yes. So what it does is it reads the base plate and it determines just the correct size. It's, you know, a standard round hole for that base plate or whatever that anchor bolt size is. Okay. So if I go back to my plan, so the location on that again is leveling plate and it's in the program data folder for your particular version under macro examples distributed BV. I don't know why it is buried so deep. That's where they put all the good parametrics. You just have to sort of master that path. Right, because all run. good parametrics were written by Bruce Vaughn or by yeah. us, but those aren't distributed. So no. if you see us, us running one that has not been distributed, just let us know in the comments and we'll, we'll get you a copy of it. The next part to this was uh, the Sag rods is anchor rods tool. Now that one is included, but you're gonna have to go digging for it. You're not gonna find that on any dropdown. So the way you get that one is you go into your toolbar configuration. Sick SDS2 error oh, screen yeah. that nobody knows why it's there. Everything's an error, but nothing's a problem. Okay. There's so always a workaround. <laughs> absolutely. So under command group, you're selecting model parametric, parametric BVD. BVD. So if you take this and just drag it anywhere to your toolbar, which I've already got, so I'm not gonna do, I've got it located there, and then click OK, it'll ask you to save. I'll go ahead and let that save. 
And now all I need to do is click that. And now I can pick the member that I want. And I go ahead and fill this all out just as I demonstrated in the previous video. I believe it's recalled all of my settings from the last usage of it, which it looks like it did. The problem I constantly have with this window is I always reverse point one and point two. Uh, yeah, point one and point. So when you're putting this in as an anchor bolt, point one and point two work just like in a column view. The point one is the bottom, point two is the top. Where this starts to get kind of hairy on you is if you're using this for, say, epoxy anchors that you want to graphically model in, mm -hmm. that's where you start getting into a little bit of trouble of which way is the head of the bolt going to be. And really the only real fix there once you've done that one wrong is just delete it and do it again and hit reverse points. That's actually a great tip in general. Uh, a lot of times with these custom members, editing it and stuff starts to get a little bit wonky and you're better off deleting it and trying again. Yeah. So in the previous video, I did it just as a straight one. Let's try this one as a hook rod. I'll leave all the other settings as they were. Let's see what it turns out. I'm done. So now I have hooked anchor bolts. Now, if I did that by mistake, rather than having to go through a whole lot of headache fit, trying to fix this, all I really have to do now is edit the specific member itself. Now, if you recall from the previous video, I did point out that that screen was just a parametric view of this screen. It was not the actual member edit screen as it created them. So right. now that I'm editing this a second time, I can actually manipulate the 0.1, 0 0.2 elevations and anything else that's in here that was not involved in that prior screen. But now I can go in and set that back to straight. And I now, believe does the x-axis rotation change piece marks on you? I can never remember if it does or does not. It it did in previous versions, although now we're in 2018. Uh, let's see if that's been fixed. So I'll put this back to a hook bolt. Oops, not bent. Straight and hook. Okay. So now we just want to have this turned out so it looks like the contract drawings would. So x-axis rotation, 180 degrees, and now they're turned out. I've got XSR 16 and XSR 15. So yes, that still does change the piece marks. Boo. I know, I know. So at that point, your only real fix is either leave them all going the same way or you can type in a user piece mark and now you'll get the mark you're after. Yeah, and there all, are all the options that you could pretty much want for an anchor bolt in this. You can put double nuts on, you can put washers, you can put bearing plate washers, you know, pretty much anything you would want to do is available to do in there. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's one, part. And, and two, it, it won't let you put in bad math. So if you put in, you know, right. in bad depth that doesn't work, it, it's going to flag it on you. Uh, yep, let's say I, I want to make this thread length 10 feet. Okay, now that's obviously longer than the rod material length. Now I not only can't move on, I can't even click OK. I can't close this now. So you get the, it works just like the handrail tool and any of the other custom members now where it, it's going to kind of color that sense. field. So where do they have this set before? Five inches, I believe. Okay, so something else that I wanted to show you was how it does the actual leveling nut. So if I stick with a leveling nut, and let's get me two washers and I'll set that to no. And now I want the top washer to be a plate washer. Two by quarter. Now, what kind of anchor bolt is this exactly? Just so I'm accurate as far as I can be. All right, so we've got a one inch rod. So I believe, what is that? Three by three eighths? Yep, typically. That's standard. Okay, now I don't actually have the correct plate washer set up for this. This is something that I always have to add in if I know I'm going to do leveling washers. But I will use the F, I believe it's 844. The bearing plate washer? washer. Yeah, for, the, for that. So let's just put a square plate under there just to keep it simplistic. And we'll run that all the same way. So now you'll see that I get, obviously, you know, I've got that leveling plates in the way. So if I delete that, this is how you would look with just the standard 
leveling nut and washer and it's a different size than the top plate washer. So when you first launch this, it asks you how to select where you want to put these things, right? Like it'll give you an option for, you can put it at, at members, you can put it at base plates, at hole types. Yes. Just go over those options quick, just. Sure. So this is useful when I'm doing epoxy anchors into clip angles on a beam going into a wall. Mm -hmm. And I just want to pick some clip angles. And what you have to, what you also have to remember when you're doing this is that it's looking for anchor bolt type holes. So if you try to put this onto a regular slotted hole, it's not going to work. So if you are using it for clip angles, you're going to want to change those hole types on the outstanding leg for uh, anchor bolts. And then once you've run this, if you want to change it back to slots, you can. But just the initial running the parametric, that's something you've got to do. Great. Uh, members will just allow you to pick any and all members. And then it looks for, again, the anchor bolt holes, I believe, just in the base plates of columns. Holes. It's kind of the same deal as materials. You're just going to have to pick the specific holes and it only works with the, I believe it only works with the uh, anchor bolt hole types. And then you've got this one, which I especially like is members, but you're going to sort by base plate piece mark. So what this allows me to do is I can swipe as many columns as I want. And when I hit enter, then it says, which piece marks do you want this to, do you want this to look for? So if I've got 10 different base plates and I only want, say, BP1 to get this particular anchor bolt, let's say BP2 is the same diameter, which it will group them by diameter, but I want BP2 to get a much longer bolt or a different type of bolt entirely, I'll run that one separately. So I'll do BP1, and it'll bring this up and allow me to go through it. But if I pick this and I try to say BP2, Okay, then it tells me that there's no anchor bolt holes in that selection because none of them had BP2, so there was nothing selected. Yep, and here's my, my pro tip as a checker is something that, a problem that you've created when using this uh, and to watch out for, for those of you who intend to use this, especially on anchor bolt setting plans, is it will make different anchor bolt lengths and threading lengths based on the thickness of the base plate. Yeah. Um, so you got to watch out and make sure that you edit those dimensions a little bit so that you're not getting, you know, four different anchor bolts because you've got a three quarter inch thick base plate, a one inch thick base plate, an inch and a quarter thick, et cetera. Uh, so do watch out for that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll point that one out real quick. So what's going on there is let's say I set this grip to one inch and then I drop this down to two and a half. Okay. Fundamentally, I have the exact same thing. However, now I've raised up that nut and plate washer just to allow for a thicker base plate. And the problem then becomes these get different piece marks. So I have XSR 16 and this should be XSR 8. Okay, so the problem there is you have to look out for those and try to determine where you have different base plate thicknesses. And then you're gonna to wanna to find that tallest one and set them all to look like that by adjusting that grip grip and rod end to bearing. And once you get those all lined up, all those piece marks will merge back together. Okay. And uh, another just quick tip while we're in here. Um, if, if you don't know, there is an option when you right click and hover over a, device or a, a, a member, you can select other and go to all of that member type. And that way, you know, you if, can, you're, if you've got to fix all your, your, your anchor bolts at once, you can do that. Yes. Now, I like to use select all just to see how many there are, let's say. But if I know I'm going to edit, then I will go to edit other. Otherwise, you're going to select them all and then okay. right click and then click edit, whereas you could just do it all from that one click. So I'll do edit other all, and now I'm into it. Yeah, selecting all of them is a good way just visually to see if you missed anything or if there's, a you know, one – anchor bolt in a pattern somehow that got messed up or, you know, yes. something like that. So. The other thing is if you're going to select multiples. So let's say I've selected all of those and I want to edit this one as well, then I can do select other, see if there's an all, there isn't, but I'll pick it up anyway. And now I can do my edit, even though I have multiple piece marks selected. And when I do that, now I'll see what's different. Bring that back. 
and it reprocesses these just like a regular beam or column member on the fly anyway. And that puts it all back the way I want it. Hey guys, thanks for joining us here today on the Steel Forum. As always, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, but also head over to the Steel Detailing SDS2 subreddits. Those links will be down in the show notes. Join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you.